Good afternoon and good morning to some of you. My name is Joshua Hudson and I'm with the National Creative Network. Welcome to the NNN webinar series on in country. This webinar is titled The Sacred Circle of Tobacco. This technical assistance webinar is being hosted by the National Native Network along with Indian Health Service, Health Promotion and Disease Prevention, and Clearway, Minnesota. Some quick disclosures. Funding for this webinar was made possible by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, CP181808, National Network Approach to Preventing and Controlling Tobacco-Related Cancers, a cooperative agreement. Webinar contents do not necessarily represent the official views of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention or the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. And there were no commercial interest support used to fund this activity. We will not be issue, we will we will not be offering continuing education units uh, for this webinar. However, we will still continue to send a post webinar survey that will be emailed to you after the completion of the webinar, seeking feedback on this presentation. There will be an opportunity at the end of this webinar to ask questions or to give comments. So on the GoToWebinar bar, there is a place under the chat where you can type it in. I will hand this over to Alberta Vicente to start Good us off. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us for the rollout of the Circuit Circle of Tobacco. My name is Alberta Vicente. I'm the Public Health Advisor for the Indy Health Service Health Promotion Disease Prevention Program in Rockville, Maryland. I'm a member of the Navajo tribe and I'm originally from Crown Point, New Mexico. And then we'll have Coco introduce herself really quickly. Hey, we hold on which watch today. My name is Coco Vilus and I work at Clearway, Minnesota in the community development department. Um, it's nice to be here with everyone today. And bonjour, everybody. My name is Joshua Hudson. I am Females Indian community in Northern Michigan, and I'm a program manager for the National Native Network, which is housed at the Inner Tribal Council of Michigan. Okay, the overall learning objectives of this presentation is the participants will be able to differentiate between commercial and traditional tobacco used and recognize the importance of engaging youth to increase their awareness of sacred tobacco and to identify sacred circle of tobacco as a resource to address commercial tobacco use. This is an outline of how we'll be presenting this afternoon. We'll, uh, we'll provide the overall background and then um, go into the history of the sacred circle of tobacco, um, talk about who our partners are and then the, the actual sacred use of traditional tobacco among tribes um, and provide an overview of uh, this uh, sacred circle of tobacco manual. And then at the end, of course, will be the questions and answers. Just wanted to share that, um, why should we be concerned about commercial tobacco use? Well, there, is, is, there are significant health disparities among American Indian Alaska Natives in the U.S. Um, cardiovascular, which is heart disease, is number one among American Indian Alaska Native population, as followed by second by cancer and diabetes. And um, this is concerning because to commercial tobacco products is actually uh, a risk factor for these diseases. Cigarette smoking has been decreasing among the general U.S. population, however, has remained the same or have increased among the American Indian Alaska Native population. The slide shows that American Indian Natives, uh, American Indians and Alaska Natives have a higher prevalence of current smoking than most of their race and ethnic groups in the U.S. Factors that may affect um, smoking prevalence may include sacred uh, tobacco ceremonial, religious and medicine, medicinal roles in native culture, which may affect attitudes, beliefs and behaviors toward commercial tobacco use. 
And if you look at this slide, you'll notice that the American Indians is at 31.8% in comparison to the other ethnic group in the US. When you looked at the, um, the smoking patterns, there are regional variations in cigarette smoke among American Indian and Alaska Native population. Um, smoking is um, has a lower prevalence in the Southwest, but is much higher in the North Northern Plains and Alaska. And what is concerning is that more American Indian Alaska Native women smoke during their last three months of pregnancy. Um, tw American Indian Alaska Native women smoke at 26.8, compared to 14.3% uh, of whites, non-Hispanics. And then when you look at the eth other ethnic groups is definitely a significant lower. What is neat about the, um, the, the sacred use of um, tobacco is uh, manual is that it uh, focuses on youth engagement. According to the ecological perspective of human development, young people are agents of their own um, development. Youth are more, more than passive recipients of external influence. Instead, they are actively involved in shaping their development by interacting with people and opportunities made available within their environment. Through youth engagement, communities can do a better job of creating services, opportunities, and support that young people need to develop in healthy ways. The Sacred Circle of Tobacco is designed to engage youth and their adult mentors to learn about the traditional use of tobacco by using stories, interactive discussions, conducting interviews, doing research, and, and at the end to develop a plan to reach their peers and communities. Now I will turn it over to Coco, who will talk about the history of the circus, sacred circle of tobacco. Thank you so much, Alberta. Um, we really wanted to acknowledge um, the people who wrote the curriculum. Um, we are working on our second edition, um, and this curriculum was developed within the Montana Tobacco Use Prevention Program um, and some of the organizations and individuals. And we really want to um, acknowledge and honor all of the good words that they um, shared for us to, you know, continue this message. Um, you know, in the past, gosh, 10, 15 years around tobacco control, especially in Indian country, we have been seeing um, a lot of amazing changes around um, traditional tobacco um, in the movement and the revitalization and restoring of it. And um, we're pretty excited because this is an unveiling of, um, you know, some of the the tools that we've uh, been passed down from this group, as well as um, some new and in engaging and um, innovative things that are happening in today with, you know, the ever-changing world with media. Um, so we'll be going through some pieces here shortly, but again, just acknowledging um, the amazing individuals who really helped to make this happen in the first place. And now I'm gonna pass it on over to Josh. Thank you, Coco. Thank you, Alberta. Um, uh... So this is a list of some of the partners for the Sacred Circle of Tobacco for the second edition. Uh, just over a year ago, we convened and we were working to revamp this curriculum. So some of the key individuals are on the call today. Uh, Coco, who you just heard from, Lori Newbreast, who she's an independent contractor, but she worked really closely with Cleary, Minnesota. She, she was an integral part of all of this. Alberta, who is on the call as well. Joe Law, who works with Indian Health Service. He works with health education and health promotion and disease prevention. Suzanne Nash, she's with the Indigenous Peoples Task Force. Jackie Arpon, who is with the Indian Health Service, um, and I don't remember what specific section of IHS, but she works for IHS in the Great Plains region. And then me, uh, Joshua Hudson. And then the key organizations are listed, um, all of which I just named. Um, I wanted to get to, but before I get to the next slide, have some poll questions. So, for everybody who's on and paying attention, um, we're going to launch this poll. What area do you primarily work within? So, tobacco prevention and control, youth development, healthcare, education, or other. So, we'll leave it open for another moment or so.
close it here in just another second or two. I know there's a couple more coming in. Currently leading us tobacco prevention and control at just over 60%. Close the poll now. I'm sharing the results. So the majority of you work in tobacco prevention and control. There's a small representation, about 3% from youth development. That's exciting. 11% from healthcare, 14% from education, and 10% from other. Okay, so the next slide. Um, I wanted to kind of talk about the sacred use of traditional tobacco, and Coco will probably chime in as well. So one thing that's really unique about the sacred circle of tobacco is it really focuses on creating space for talking about and learning about the sacred use of traditional tobacco. Uh, because the overarching messaging that we receive from you know, commercial tobacco control uh, and prevention is that tobacco is bad, tobacco is evil. Um, so the, the whole premise of this youth manual is to create space when working with youth to have these conversations in a structured way and making sure that you know, they're getting this education that they might not get elsewhere. And for some people who may be on the line who don't know, tobacco is a traditional medicine uh, that spans actually the North American and Central American continent and into the, the Caribbean. It is a medicine that's held in high regard for many tribes, not all tribes, but many tribes. And the sacred use looks different within the different tribes. So there's spaces in the curriculum for people who are working with youth to bring that information there or to bring somebody from the community who has that information. Coco, did you have anything that you wanted to add to the conversation at the moment? Yeah, I would just add that um, we know for many different tribes, there's a lot of different protocols and teachings, um, and this manual is very flexible, and we want to honor, you know, whatever community and those teachings come from. So in the manual, you'll see some examples, but again, we really um, look to people's leadership and guidance uh, when they're utilizing the manual uh, to find out their teachings within their communities. Um, you know, around the sacred use of tobacco and um, just different medicines. And, and I think that's the beauty of this is that you're always going to be learning. Even uh, as we were working on this, um, we were learning a lot of different stories, um, you know, reaching out to people. Because um, we are, we're definitely want to acknowledge that we are not able to represent all of the different tribal tobacco teachings for many reasons because of, um, you know, some are allowed to be shared, some are not different um, seasons. And so I just think that's one of the beautiful things um, about this manual is, um, us learning and growing together. Thank you, Coco. So um, I wanted to talk about uh, the two pictures that are on the screen right now. So on the right is actually a picture of a tobacco plant that Lori Newbreast took um, several, a few years ago. I don't remember the exact year, but she took this picture outside of the National Museum of the American Indian, which is in Washington, D.C. It's part of the Smithsonian Institution. Um, and they grow plants outside of NMAI that are sacred and have cultural significance to many tribes throughout the, um, the larger American region. Um, so that's exciting that Lori took that picture and we wanted to integrate that to make sure that we were bringing Lori to this presentation because she wasn't able to be here today. Um, but on the left is a painting, and I know Coco could give you more information um, on who painted this and the background on it. But so this is a depiction of the use of our sacred pipe. Um, and I know that there's a lot of misconceptions that are out there within mainstream media and mainstream culture, you know, but from like what I'll say is when we use our, our sacred pipes, it's, in a, it's a mode of prayer. And, you know, the smoke isn't inhaled because it's, it's a mode of prayer. So that's not meant for us as human beings. Um, so that's kind of what's being shown here. And there's other teachings and I'm not the, you know, person to seek teachings from. I'm just sharing a little bit of what I know so that if there are people on the call who are wondering, I wanted to pull some of that information. But Coco, I wasn't sure if you wanted to give some attribution to this artist. Uh, yes, so this uh, image was gifted to us um, and basically anyone who would like to use it, just uh, contact Suzanne Nash um, at the Indigenous Peoples Task Force. This was created by um, one of their um, former colleagues is 
uncle um, to really, you know, talk about what Josh, what Josh just highlighted. Um, so this is something that we just wanted to acknowledge, especially when we're um, getting back to the traditional tobacco and seeing images that are reflective of our community. Thank you, Coco. So I have another poll. I'm launching it currently. So it's asking, is there a difference between commercial tobacco and traditional tobacco? Keep it open for a few more seconds. I'll close it out. We're at 98% for yes, so that's exciting. Um, there, there is difference between commercial tobacco and traditional tobacco. Um, Commercial tobacco is purchased at stores, um, and it's typically treated with multiple toxins and additives and carcinogens. Uh, and traditional tobacco is harvested traditionally and respectfully uh, within our community. Go to the next slide, which kind of talks about the missions and goals of the Sacred Circle of Tobacco. So the primary mission of the Sacred Circle of Tobacco is to reinforce the traditional uses of tobacco uh, used by American Indian and Alaska Native people, really by educating the youth of the spiritual and cultural significance of tobacco, which Alberta did mention briefly earlier. Um, so some of the goals, educate youth to understand and identify the positive aspects of keeping tobacco sacred, adopting a culturally specific and spiritual relationship to tobacco, and a greater sense of pride in traditional life ways. And then also to develop youth as leaders and advocates, developing skills so that they can in turn teach others, sharing the unique aspects of traditional uses of tobacco. And so one of the one of the goals is just to you know help build them up. And what I always say is not really looking at our youth as leaders of tomorrow, but really understanding that they're leaders of today. So helping give them, you know, helping to pull out and develop skills and you know abilities within them so that they can use it today and not tomorrow because we need them today. Another poll. So we're gonna launch this poll right now. Asking does the tobacco industry target American Indian and Alaska Native? Leave it open for a few more seconds. Okay, I'm closing it. I'll share the results with you really quickly. Um, so that was an 85% saying yes, 7% saying no, and 7% unsure. Um, so why I brought this up is um, on the next slide I'm going to so kind of the format. So this is um, the different modules will have this, it will show this um, at the beginning of the modules. And I'll talk about the different activities that are in there. Um, I believe activity three, oh, there's a typo. So it would really be activity four, but the truth about commercial tobacco, um, you know, that's an exercise that you could do with the youth um, using tobacco documents. Um, the truth initiative alongside I believe it's the University of California, San Francisco. They house these tobacco documents from the, um, the master settlement. So there's documents that you can sift through and find information that um, the tobacco industry did indeed target American Indian and Alaska Native people. Um, so you can, you know, that's an exercise that you could do with them. So this is kind of showing like the format and it goes over the overview, the learning objectives, some supplies that you might need, and then the activities and the preparation for the activity. 
I wasn't sure if Alberta or Coco wanted to hear anything at this moment. There, um, I think just again with the, the format of these exercises, uh, there's a lot of flexibility in making them work for the group that you'll um, be working with and, you know, again, utilizing, um, you know, your community resources and, um, you know, other different types of kind of icebreakers and, and activities um, that can be, you know, uh, interwoven throughout um, the format of T-Scott. Yeah, um, it's just uh, when we were look, um, redesigning this and updating it, we wanted to make it very simple and easy to follow. So, um, you know, a adult um, mentor or anybody can pick it up and go be able to look through it and then be able to use, um, go through, uh, you know, what are the activities and how long the activities are and then plus, um, you know, how long, uh, how to prepare for each of the lessons. So um, it's very simple and straightforward and, and easy to use. So people will be able to just pick it up and use it. But if people feel, um, don't feel um, confident in using it, they can always um, ask for training, uh, an online training that we can go provide in the future too. Yeah, thank you, Alberta. So, as a follow-up, I have another poll that I'm going to launch right now. Unlike the other polls, the other polls, you selected one answer because you can select multiple. So, the poll is now open. It's asking, what are ways that the tobacco industry targets American Indian markets? So, you can select any number of them. And so the goal behind using some of these polling questions is to give like ideas to help stimulate some thought around what you could be doing with youth in your communities. Uh, we do have some activities in there that um, you would do in person, but you know we try to include some space for adaptations. So if that's you know when you're working with youth in your communities to do use free text message polling services, you know that's an opportunity that's something akin to what we're doing right now. Keep it open for another few seconds. We're only at 79% voting and we've been getting 88% previously. So a couple more of you respond. Close the poll and I'll share them with you. So 93% of people identified that uh, the tobacco industry uses cultural symbols and imagery. 67% identified exploiting sacred medicines. 79% identified ethnically ambiguous models in advertising. <clears throat> While well, 68% said giving free samples. Um, however, giving free samples is actually against the law for tobacco companies. Uh, but e-cigarettes are kind of uncharted territory at the moment. But you can end, it's actually legal to mail tobacco through the mail system. So. So the next slide is just like an overview, and we've kind of been touching on this throughout, but you know, how would we use this? So you would recruit an adult mentor and then some youth um, with the goal that you don't have somebody who is, you know, leading everything, but they're working with the youth to help, you know, lead among themselves. Um, if needed, schedule a one-day training for adult mentor and youth. Um, so, you know, really focusing on engaging some of the youth to help and some of this and help put it on. Uh, oh. um, and then after the training, the youth are expected to develop a plan with encouragement and support from their adult mentor. Uh, but so the question, like, who can use the sacred circle of tobacco? Everybody. Um, it's going to be available for download on the National Native Network website tomorrow, along with the archived webinar. Um, and then where to access it, it'll be on our website under the resources tab. I'm not sure if Coco or Alberta wanted to chime in. Got any comments? Uh, 
Um, so I have one final poll that I'm going to launch right now. And it's just asking, what does C. Scott stand for? Leaving it open for just a few more seconds. Closing it, I'll share it. Ninety-nine percent of you selected the sacred circle of tobacco, which is correct. So now we'll move over to questions and answers. So on the little side panel for the GoToWebinar platform. You look on the bottom, it'll say chat. And if you open that, you can type in there. You can ask questions or just give some commentary. And while you guys are uh, going through your questions or thinking about your questions, and when the um, manual unveils, um, and you guys are going through it, please feel free to contact us at any time if you have some questions. Um, we do have a, some background in terms of uh, utilizing the curriculum. Uh, Suzanne Nash has uh, helped to implement a lot of the activities with her youth group. Um, and, and I think, too, one of the most important pieces is really listening to the young people and what they want, um, and again, being flexible in um, how these activities can go, and, and you know, if there's any that you guys use and work with your communities, please feel free to share it. Um, we're always able to adapt that. That's the beautiful thing about, um, you know, online and social media. Um, and it's really just wanting to make sure that we're connecting and networking and, you know, utilizing the amazing resources out there. Um, and so please always share any type of feedback that you guys have once you are start going through it. Um, even if you began using it, we would love to hear about that. Thank you, Coco. Okay, so some of the questions. Um, someone asked if you will be able to get the PowerPoint. You will. It will be available on our webpage on keepitsacred.org under the resources tab. There's an archived webinar section. There you will be able to find, so tomorrow you'll be able to find the recorded webinar that's taking place currently, along with the downloadable PowerPoint slides and then the downloadable um, Manual, the Sacred Circle of Tobacco Manual. Um, Gary Sharwood is on the line with us, so that's exciting. Hey, Gary. Gary's from Minnesota, and he was very active with Cleary, Minnesota. He was training the Gathering of Native Americans curriculum. Gary's just a really great guy for traditional tobacco. Someone asked to have access to the beautiful artwork of the sacred pipe. Um, I will make sure that I connect connect you with Coco, or not Coco, with Suzanne, and she'll be able to send, send that to you. Okay. Here's a longer comment. So it says, I believe that limited information available concerning traditional tobacco contributes to misconceptions or misinformation concerning traditional products. How can we work to learn factual information about sacred tobacco? Have studies been done or are any studies being done on traditional tobacco to really identify the differences between each tribe in traditional tobacco and its use and its effects, if any? Um, so I'll answer and then Coco and Alberta can chime in too. I'm not aware of any like scientific research that's taking place um, comparing uh, particulate matters, for instance, in the, the smoke or nicotine levels between traditional tobacco or commercial tobacco. I'm not aware of any. The, the science that I really like to look at is the science of our culture, of our teachings, and knowing that 
we have protective factors built in place in the way that we utilize our sacred medicines. And, you know, so going back to what I had mentioned about uh, the pipe. So by not inhaling it, you know, your exposure to nicotine is very limited, um, even through use of the pipe. Um, so I don't know of any, like, concrete scientific research that's happening. I don't know if Coco or Alberta has anything. No, I would um, definitely echo what you just said, Josh. Um, that is something that, um, you know, the fact that we're even talking about our traditional tobacco and our medicines um, is something that, uh, you know, was really, tr um, really forced upon us back in the day to not be doing. Um, and it wasn't until the American Indian Religious Freedom Act of 1978, when that passed, we were allowed to practice our, you know, our spirituality out in the open. Um, but we always credit all of our um, elders and ancestors who um, continue to keep these teachings alive. Um, and for us to be able to even work on this curriculum, um, that's kind of uh, been my my background in, um, you know, how we've been learning about this. And um, Josh said it so elegantly, but that's, that's been the way that um, a lot of us have been taught to. I'm not aware of any scientific study um, about the, I guess, commercial versus traditional tobacco. I mean, its effects. Um, I know that some tribes are very, um, keep their tobacco um, very sacred and they definitely are not um, interested in um, doing some research studies. So I, I've heard from several tribes and who um, mentioned to me that, you know, their, their, their tobacco is very sacred. Their traditional tobacco is very sacred and it's not something that you would want to um, research. So it varies from tribe to tribe. And then again, I am not aware of any um, research study going on. Thank you, Albert and Coco. So the next uh, that's listed is actually from the same person, but it says, I've discovered that traditional tobacco used by most tribes is not the same plant used for commercial tobacco that contains the addictive ingredient nicotine. I think confusion also comes from the same use of the word tobacco. Has there ever been discussion to relabel sacred slash traditional tobacco? Um, again, I'm going to defer to Coco and Alberta, but I'll chime in really quickly. So I work a lot. Um, so the program that I work on, the National Native Network, is funded by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. And that's something that I do consistently talk about is by just addressing it as tobacco, you know, it's on some level it's it is the correct label, but it's <clears throat> exclusive in the sense that it's not it's excluding a lot of American Indian and Alaska Native uh, perspectives, worldview, and traditional life ways. You know, so by saying that tobacco is evil or that we're seeking a tobacco-free world um, or you know tobacco-free kids in in my community our youth will be healthy when they are using our sacred tobacco. You know, um, and I, Coco was an author on the article, the, Why the World Will Not Be Tobacco Free. Um, you know, so I do get what you're saying and I do agree with that. And that's one thing that I am very intentional with, in, especially with the circles that I'm in and the people that I talk to is making sure that we're being very intentional with our language and labeling it as commercial tobacco. Because that's ultimately what we're talking about. We're talking about a medicine that's been commercialized and is being sold and mass produced for addictive use. You know, so that's, we have to really name it. And so that's how I do that. But, and sometimes it's being in those circles and making sure that I'm using, you know, my language. So, you know, when I'm talking about tobacco, I'm not just going to say tobacco. I'll talk about using SEMA because in our Anishinaabe Moen, that is our name for that sacred medicine. So being very intentional with language use and, you know, what I mean, what I'm saying, you know, talking about using SEMA and using it in ceremonial context, you know, so there's multiple ways to approach that. Um, and I'm going to defer to Coco and Alberta again. Absolutely. Um, supporting again, Josh is uh, definitely on point in, um, you know, explaining that and um, you know, for a lot of communities, the word, um, you know, tobacco and their translation of what it really means, it's, it, there's just so many beautiful stories and teachings. And um, Lori Newbreath always gives an amazing example of what, you know, their word tobacco um, translate to. It's, um, you know, it's just something 
that tells, you know, a bigger meaning and something that's relevant to their area. Um, and just for even us in the community that I live in, um, we'll use the word shashasha, which um, is completely different than, um, you know, the tobacco that you would find in the stores, commercial tobacco. Um, and so that is a big part of, um, you know, the curriculum too, I think that would be amazing is, you know, the young people and the mentors helping to find and learn those stories of what that means. Um, and really, again, reclaiming um, our language, our medicines. Um, and I think this uh, manual is um, a stepping stone towards that as well. Alberta, do you have anything? Um, when, in my line of work, I used, uh, I'm very specific about um, tobacco. I refer to it as a commercial tobacco or traditional tobacco. And I think among some tribes, um, most tribes is they're very, there's specific names for tobacco. And um, like for, uh, in the Navajo tribe, they call it mountain medicine, which is translated to that, that's a Navajo word for mountain medicine. So they're very, when you go to the different tribes, they have very specific names for it. And, and um, I know that within my tribe um, with mountain medicine, it's, um, it's not necessarily a tobacco product in them, but it's, some, it's actually a plant that, has, that doesn't contain nicotine. So the tobacco, the type of tobacco are, um, you know, it varies um, from tribe to tribe as well. So um, in, in terms of um, in, um, being, making it very specific, I think that really uh, distinguishes it from, um, you know, from commercial to traditional tobacco. Coco and Alberta. Um, one of the next questions is if we were to send grown traditional tobacco in the channel, um, just because it's technically against the law to mail it, I'm not going to tell you to do that. Um, I guess that would be someone, I think you'll have to do some further research on your own. Uh, but I suppose that an argument could be made that because it, they are different, it's a technically a different plant, it's a different species um, than what is grown commercially. So I guess that would be have to that would be something that you would have to the next question for the full question about strategies tobacco companies have used to target American Indian Alaska Native, which were the correct responses? So there were four answers. The first three were the correct ones. So using cultural symbols and imagery, exploiting sacred medicines and ethnically ambiguous models in advertising. And then the fourth one, giving free samples that's not, I was saying that's not legal any longer. So that's why that one wasn't correct. The next question says, I've been in an urban city where they were giving out cigarettes in a bar. It can happen. That's just to say that it's illegal doesn't mean that it's not happening, uh, but it is technically against the law. <clears throat> the next question asks how many activities there are in T. Scott. I don't know the number off the top of my head. That's a good question. I didn't tally them all up. So I apologize. I don't, I don't have the number for you. I just don't know. The next question, uh, you mentioned the training will be available online. Is that the entire training or a train the trainer version? So it will be the entire training. It's just one manual uh, that is intended to be used by the by the facilitator, um, and that's adult and or youth. Um, and then there's the activities in there can be printed out if they're like worksheets, for instance, or like interview sheets or word searches. Um, and some of them are just directions on how to do, you know, like a, a group dynamic class. There's a question about if I want someone to come do a training on this, who should I contact? Um, actually, so contact information, uh, Alberta, Coco, and I, that's our contact information. So you could reach out to any one of us um, and we could work out with you how to do, uh, how to give additional training on this if, if you do feel like you need it in the future. The next question asks when the manual is going to be available. The manual should be available on the website tomorrow afternoon. 
Next question asks if the imp while implementing TSCOT, is it a day training or, or a half? You can actually divide it up how you would like. So you can do it all in a day, but there are some activities, um, like I know that I mentioned, uh, an interview sheet. So you would either, if you're going to do it in one day or a day and a half, you would need to give that in, you know, give those, some of those tasks to the youth ahead of time for them to complete if that was something that you didn't want to do. You know, I think that the idea, I don't think, the idea behind this manual is to have like multiple options. So you could do it all or you could just do pieces. You could do it all in a day or a day and a half, or you could do it over a series of six weeks. If you're having a teen night through a youth program, for instance, you could do a couple exercises from each and then they could do things in between like interview caregivers or parents or grandparents about tobacco uh, and tobacco teaching, for instance. What age groups are appropriate for the curriculum? Um, so the this the Sacred Circle of Tobacco Manual is aimed for teenagers. I'm not sure if Alberta or Coco wants to chime in on this. I know that the city of Alberta is area. Um, it actually can be used by anybody um, because it really focuses on the history of the sacred use of tobacco. I mean to get the discussion going because there are adults who may not have um, had any um, experience with tobacco and may not know the history of the tobacco uh, in their tribe. Um, and so um, anybody can actually use it. There's many origin stories in the, throughout the manual that were submitted from the different tribes. And so, um, you know, it can actually initiate um, um, a discussion about um, how, if your tribe, had used um, uh, traditional tobacco, and um, and so and and you do some interviewing. So it can be actually for any age group, um, to whoever wants to learn about the history of tobacco. And then we made the manual very interactive, and then to have some discussion, and and to ensure that there's maximum participation, that people are all engaged. So um, to do out the manual too. So it's. Um, it's okay. That's it. Thank you, Alberta. And so, I guess just kind of bouncing off of that too. So, really about when you're working with youth, you know, making sure that you're giving a appropriate, you know, level. So, a lot of the things that are in here, a lot of these can be done at you know age appropriate levels. You know, so obviously you wouldn't expect a third grade level participant to search the, you know, the truth tobacco documents and find, you know, re, you know, documents from the Castro documents citing how they targeted American Indian and Alaskan Native people, right? So, you know, but you can still have conversations with them about what does traditional tobacco use look like in your community, in your family, and in your personal life? You know, so, like, there's really an opportunity to adapt it in the way that you see fit. Um, Next question, do you have evaluation results from the youth that have participated in the training? We don't have formal evaluation results. We just, it was kind of, a, Suzanne was working with her youth and was doing some of the activities and just kind of getting informal feedback from them. So we don't have formal evaluation results. Um, the next question, thank you for the great information. They're looking forward to reviewing the resources. Thank you for the comment. Uh, up next, I have discovered that traditional tobacco used by most tribes is not the same plant used for commercial tobacco that contains the addictive ingredient nicotine that popped up earlier. It must have submitted again. Um, do you have contact for groups that have successfully implemented T. Scott that can guide us? That's a good question. Um, I don't have contact, and as was originally stated, um, at the beginning of the presentation, this is an older curriculum that we've revamped. So we, I don't have any contact for groups that have successfully implemented TSCOT as it is now. Um, and I do believe, Coco, you worked a little with TSCOT back in the day, correct? Yes, correct. Um, and I could just say my experience was very great. I utilized it um, for the multiple kind of uh, situations where we would do like a two-day training or I would utilize it for um, 
you know, uh, taking one specific exercise as team building um, among different groups. So um, my experience has been very great. It was a really a great learning opportunity, um, you know, in the communities that I was working with to learn more about, you know, their different traditional tobacco teachings. Um, and so it, it's a very flexible manual. Um, you really make it um, work for what is best for you and um, the community that you're working in. Um, and again, it can be utilized with like five people for some of the exercises that we've talked about, or it can be, you know, a full blown um, training workshop. Thanks, Coco. Uh, there's a comment saying that this was their first webinar, this person's first webinar that they participated in that uses interactive polling, and they thought it was well done. Uh, thank you for the comment. I appreciate it. There's a comment stating there's a book that talks all about tobacco use in North America, and it's titled Tobacco Use by Native North Americans. And it's edited by Joseph C. Winter, so that's a resource. If you're looking for one, that would be a good resource to, good resource to use. There's a comment that says, in my mind, the difference always is frequency, duration, and it varies with tribes. Uh, that's a really good point, especially when we talk about traditional tobacco use and what that looks like. It varies. Um, you know, I find myself in rooms with people who ask, well, what does that look like or what is it? And I have to speak very broadly because I can't tell you what every tribe's practice is or what their protocol is. But I can tell you it's not, you know, every 15 minutes, you know, throughout the day. Uh, you know, I, I can't tell you necessarily what it is, but I can tell you what it's not. Um, I can tell you that it's not, you know, rooted in addiction. It's not rooted in, you know, this nicotine fix that you have to get. Um, so that is a really good point that it's rooted in frequency, duration, and it varies. Next question, could you tell me a little more about the manual? Is the curriculum for a specific age group? Um, I think we answered that. It's, it's moldable to what you need it and what you want it. I think the primary range is aimed at teenagers, but you know, given the, the correct circumstances and you know the, the motivated person putting on the, the, the training with the youth, it can be adapted. Um, if there's another comment, if they want to look at traditional tobacco from an ethnobotanical, archaeobotanical viewpoint. Um, I think that was a follow-up to the resource, the book that I mentioned previously, Tobacco Use by Native North American, edited by Joseph C. Uh, here's another comment. My understanding of traditional tobacco is the gathering of traditional tobacco is very sacred to whomever is gathering it, as it is taken with prayers, and the plant is told what the leaves will be used for. As for nicotine, traditional tobacco does have nicotine, but when used in a traditional way, it is inhaled, but it is inhaled, but to bless oneself. Um, and I have seen, and I can't link them to you, I have to try and find them, but I have seen that traditional tobacco that it does typically contain traces of nicotine, although it's worth noting that many tribes have different varieties of tobacco, so nicotine levels would vary. Uh, but it is nowhere near the tobacco plant that is cultivated um, and harvested specifically for commercial, you know, production. So it does it does vary in, in that instance. Um, that it is not inhaled. This is a follow-up comment. Yep, and it, it, it is not. <clears throat> There's a comment thanking us for the presentation and the very thorough responses. Uh, is follow-up comment. A follow-up question, is there an evaluation post-training for the youth to take to see if this information helps them or learn something new? Uh, that was a conversation that we had had. We just didn't quite develop that. So that's not something that is going to be, like there's not a survey that comes with it for you to give to the youth participants, uh, but that is something that you could develop on your own if you're looking to collect data for uh, purposes within your program to chart it with youth or to use for uh, grant applications, that's for sure something that you could do. I'm not sure if you had anything to add in there, Alberta. Um, no, but I have, um, I do have um, 
the question regarding uh, how many lessons there are in the sacred circle to back there is um, five modules and the module is um, one is introduction and what you what do you know about tobacco module two is the traditional use of tobacco module three is early use of tobacco and module four is the cultural uses of tobacco and module five is really focusing on the youth to engage in teaching um, and um, there's a lot of um, pre um, word searches and testing their knowledge and making pledges and presentation forms and materials and how to get ready. And so, and then plus there's um, specific lessons for student teaching um, that the students can use uh, when they're ready to go um, teach. There is um, actually three teachings um, lesson for the students to be able to use um, to reach out to their peers about increasing their awareness of traditional use of tobacco. And then we also included the um, the um, learning more about e-cigarettes um, since that's a product that's that's out there um, in our communities. Um, and, and then was, as a result of the flavoring of e-cigarettes, the, the teenagers are very attractive to that. So we we, we included the um, you know a, a short lesson on. Um, um, e-cigarettes on it and its health effects as well. Thank you, Alberta. And next question, are we seeing tribal Are we seeing more tribal communities growing their own traditional slash sacred tobacco? Um, I can speak broadly and generally I'll say yes. Um, I don't have numbers to give you, but this is um, there's a growing movement with throughout Indian country of the food sovereignty movement, but understanding that food ultimately is medicine and tobacco is a medicine. It's not necessarily something that we eat, but understanding that everything is ultimately interconnected in the world as a whole, but especially within our traditional life ways uh, throughout Indian country. So I would say, yes, we are seeing more tribal communities growing their own uh, traditional and sacred tobacco because this is a, you know, it's a cultural revitalization practice and it's a decolonial effort, you know, where it used to be really common to pass out cigarettes at funerals or pass out loose leaf tobacco that you would go buy at the store. You know, we're seeing the rise of, you know, the use of knick knick here in, you know, Anishinaabe Aki, but, you know, or just traditional tobacco in whatever language, you know, Shintasha, right? Um, so that's definitely something that is, Resurging. Uh, there's another comment, and a good book reference, Tobacco is American, The Story of Tobacco Before the Coming of the White Man by Herbert J. Spinden, uh, S-P-I-N-D-E-N. Uh, question, so these resources will be available where and are they free for communities to use? The resources will be available tomorrow on our website, www.keepitsacred.org. Under the resources tab, under the archived webinars, you'll see this, you'll click on the page for the Sacred Circle of Tobacco. You'll see this recorded webinar, the PowerPoint slide, and then the curriculum to be downloaded, and it is free. Uh, there's a question, do you have a resource list? of who may have some traditional SEMA if needs some or who grows it. I do not. Um, what I would do is I would encourage you to contact people within your community. They should be able to help point you in the right direction. Um, and yeah, so people in your community should know. Um, and if they don't, then keep asking around. I know that's not very helpful. I apologize, I can't speak for every community, but chances are when you're in Indian country, if you need something and you ask around, you'll eventually find it, or someone will know how to connect you with it. Uh, I believe there's, um, there's one question and one comment left. The last question is asking, is vaping language included in the curriculum? Yes, we did include uh, information and conversations around vaping, um, and we tried to keep it as up-to-date as we could. Um, including noting like jeweling because 
you know, in popular culture references, dueling is viewed as different from vaping, although it still uses the same type of implement. However, we did try to include it as much as possible um, to make it relevant and applicable. Uh, <clears throat> a comment, thanks, I like this direction. Thank you, we're really glad that you're here. There's a couple more coming in. Some people thanking us, they tuned in late. Uh, but tomorrow you'll be able to, if, and if you dial in late, you'll be able to do the whole presentation tomorrow. All right, well, I think that's everything. I'm not sure if there was any last comments that you might have, Alberta or Coco. Um, this is Alberta with Indy Health Service. Um, if um, folks are wanting, uh, like I said, an online training, please um, reach out to us. Um, you'll be able to have our contact information off the um, webinar. So um, feel free to reach out to any of us. So we'll be able to go um, provide an online training um, if needed. And so, um, but however, I, uh, I had mentioned that um, we made the the manual very um, uh, make we've um, actually formatted in such a way that's easy to use and follow. And then, but um, however, um, sometimes you know you need a little um, training to be able to implement it. So just feel free to reach out to us. And we're going to have an evaluation of um, the the actual training itself. And um, and so. Um, and then if there's other evaluations that you want to develop, um, please reach out to us and share it with us. So we'll be able to go share with others as well. Thank you, Alberta. Did you have anything you wanted to add in Coco before we complete the webinar? Thank you all so much for uh, taking the time out of your busy day to um, be with us. This has been um, a labor of love project for all of us, and we're really excited that um, it will be going live tomorrow. And to echo what Coco said, um, I'm Ojibwe, so I'm going to say miigwech, which is commonly just translated as thank you, but um, I was taught that it ultimately means everything that you have to offer, I hold close to my heart. So miigwech for all of you for spending your time on this afternoon or this morning with us. Um, it means a lot that you dialed in, and I hope that this is useful for you in the ways that you can and are planning to use it in your communities. Thank you all. Please check our website and have a great rest of your day.